Welcome to Time Bold Office Hours on September 21st, 2023. You are live with Doug and Quinston and now TJ. We're here to answer your questions, check your workflows, and generally just make sure that you get the most out of Time Bold. Today, we're going to be talking about Adobe Premiere and what's, what is the format and workflow that's going to be best for the different export options. We've been getting a lot of questions, Quinston, about uh, timing and, and yeah. how to increase, decrease the speed at which it, it's responding. I understand you've got some files to work with. We can take a sure. look at the way Timebolt works is Timebolt is built to work with one file at a time inside the Timebolt application. So when you load up Timebolt, it go, it's, it's going to take one file at a time. Now, this file can also have multiple audio tracks, and then you can switch between those. For example, if I take a file with multiple aud aud audio tracks and select this one, it basically generates a combination of different tracks together so that you have uh, an understanding of which file the Timebolt algorithm is being run on, which track the algorithm is being run on. So if you can see over here, the select track, then you can see that this file actually contains a lot of them. It contains five. So it's giving you a combination of which tracks you want to run the algorithm on. You can even select just an individual track. So I can just say track zero, and that's what it's on at the moment. First of all, I want to show you how you can use Timebolt with a single video file. So this is the video file that, that, that I've selected. And here you can see the Timebolt has auto-generated the cuts. Now, there are three ways in which you can export this these cuts into Premiere Pro. The simplest and by far the easiest way is by using this button over here. It's called an XML export. You click on this button and it gives you an XML file with the frame rate at which the video is recorded at. So you can't you can't change the frame rate from Timebolt or the file that you want. It's going to take the frame rate that the file already has been recorded in and that frame rate is going to be applied to the XML file. So that's what you get over here. I'm going to click on this and it's going to open a folder and and, sh and point to where that file is on, on disk. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize time bold. I'm going to take this file, drag it and drop it into this media pool. And as you can see, you have two files over here now. One of these files is a sequence and the other one is the source, the source video. The interesting thing is when you import this for the first time, it's going to look like this. And usually the biggest issue that I've seen people do is they take this and drag it and drop it like this. And then they complain, oh, it's not working. Where is my f file? What I would suggest is instead of using this button over here, icon view, you use list view. And when you click on list view, you get two things. The first thing is that uh, the icons change. So you see the icon over here, it's it's a timeline icon. That means it's a sequence. And if you see over here, it's a video icon, which means it's the source video file. So you don't double click on this, you double click on the icon. So you double click on the icon and that's it. It opens up your, your cuts. That is what you will be using to create a new sequence, for example. So I can even create like a new sequence complete. So I go new sequence. I can select whatever I want. I can click on sequence. Okay. So now this is a new sequence. I can go to the old sequence that Timebolt gave me and copy these parts and then paste them here. And you can see they've been pasted and I can paste them how many ever times I want. Um, I'm, I'm just giving an example of how we can manipulate this whole thing. Once you import the XML, you can take those cuts. You don't have to be limited to that, that sequence. You can take those, drop it into some other sequence and play with them and arrange them the way you would want them to be arranged. Okay. This is the first and most simplest way of uh, taking out the file from Timebolt, the cuts from Timebolt and dropping them into Premiere Pro. The second way to do that is a new way that we just introduced, I think two weeks ago, and that is generate an XML sequence. Uh, to make a differentiation here, this, this button XML also gives you a sequence, but it's a sequence which contains the cuts directly, right? This thing gives you a sequence, which has a sequence, which also has a sequence inside. Now, why is that important? Let's, let's uh, take a look. So I click on this. It'll give me a similar file with uh, an underscore one. So one thing to re remember is that when Timebolt is exporting these files, if it finds that in the same directory, there is a file with the same name, it's gonna, it's not gonna overwrite that. It's gonna add an underscore increment one, for example, in this case, and then make that as the uh, location as where the file is being stored. So I click on this button over here. As you can see, it gives me a different file. I'm going to minimize time build again, take this file and drop it in. Some Sometimes there are some issues, but if you just re-import it, it works. And this is probably a Premiere Pro issue <laughs> because we didn't change any of the files. So the, the structure in this is a little different, right? As you can see, it's clearly labeled as the video file, but then we have the source video and then we have video.mp4. Now, this is not what we want to touch right now. We just want to touch video.mp4. If I click on this, it shows the cuts, but it's green in color. Now in Premiere Pro, the default green color means that it's part of a sequence. Now, what does that mean? If I double click on any of these clips, it's going to open the source video. So yes. the source video contains the entire source video. Like it contains the whole video and the sequence, a part of that sequence and treats that as the video file and creates the cuts. Now, what does that mean? It means that let's say you have um, an audio file, which is not linked to your video file, an audio file that you recorded. Now, in that case, I can go to my whatever file uh, I've recorded. I can, in this case, it's audio to MP3. I can take that audio to MP3, drop it in. And in my source sequence, I'm going to just, and I'm going to mute this. So I'm going to mute the audio from the video and I'm going to use the new audio file as the, as the primary audio. That's what happens. 
in the sequence. Now the cuts remain the same, everything remains the same, but the audio is switched. And that is very important because now you can use an external audio source in time board uh, with the time board cuts without having to use the extension. If, if it wasn't already synced, if the audio wasn't already synced to uh, the main, the, the video file, would you sync it at this yeah, level? I, I, I would sync it. And the best part is that you don't need to have it uh, be longer or shorter. E e e even if I do this, like I cut it half, it changes over here, which means that I can even manipulate the size of the audio of, of the file and then fit it according to what the, the cuts are. And it's very easy to verify whether the cuts are correct. So would you say that this sequential way of the XML sequence, the best way to do this is if you have a single video file and an audio file that correct. may not be this, attached? This is the best way. Because now, because now any effects that you apply to the sequence overall, Correct. you're not messing with the individual yeah. file. No, so you apply the effects to the source video, to the source, not the sequence. Because when you apply to the source, it automatically affects the sequence. That makes sense. So that's the, that's if I, for example, if I do something like, uh, if I go to the effects section and I make the scale bigger, right? Let's say I make the scale 150, right? And now if I go back to the sequence, you can see it's 150. So whatever I do over here, if I make the audio loud or if I make it quieter, it's going to affect the sequence. And that's so very like interesting because anything if i do a vignette if i do a loudness if i do punch in if i do animations anything that happens here is going to affect here well my, my question would be is is that would you say you want to apply like the whatever blanket effect like color grading or things Correct. like that you want to do to the source file yes, i guess for yes. things like punch besides doing it in time bolt which will export through Correct. xml sequence uh you would do you would want to do it at the sequence level be, if you wanted to have different oh, yeah. oh yeah definitely but don't so my advice would be do not go and cut this don't make any cuts in the source if you're doing any cut work make it in the sequence and like if you're I'm, doing yeah. transitions or like just yeah that can be done in the sequence yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, you can even add like multiple video files to this. So for, for demonstration sake, I'm just going to add uh, the same video file back here. Like if I add this over here and if I, so I can even add like a, other video files to make, like if I want to turn one scene off and one, one on over here, I can even do that. So that's also possible. I wouldn't recommend it because uh, it's more cumbersome. So the sequence is best if you want to apply blanket effects and you have a separate audio file. Beautiful, so, beautiful. Because otherwise, if you didn't have your separate audio file, it would just make sense to do the XML. Correct. 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 Okay, perfect. Okay. Now, the third way is by using the extension. The extension, I wouldn't recommend uh, to use the extension on single files, but for demonstration's sake, I'm just going to show it. We'll, we'll, the next example will be how you can do it for uh, multicam. So in this case, you don't export anything from here. You save the JSON. This button over here, save timeline cuts. You click on the, click on that. Is It gives you a, a JSON file, right? I click on this and it shows me where the file is and that, that's fine. I go back to Premiere Pro and for this, you do need to install the extension. And an easy way to install that is by going to this button over here, multi-file utilities, and just going to Premiere Pro extension. And it just like directs you to a place where you can download the extension from. We need to update this link, but anyway, it's still there. We'll give you some videos on how to install it. And then there are also like tutorial videos on how to use the extension for Premiere Pro. Uh, just to like complete, uh, there's also like the same type of file uh, links to DaVinci Resolve integration and the Final Cut uh, Pro X multicam extension. Let's assume that you have installed the extension and we're proceeding from there. Uh, the, the usage is a little different. In this case, you actually have to import the file manually. So I'm going to take the same file I dropped into Premiere Pro, into Timebolt and drop it into Premiere Pro. And and you have to populate the, the sequence. I'm going to just drag it and drop it and create a sequence. So this is my this is my timeline. So I'm going to go to extensions. I'm going to go to a time build extension. And it opens up like this. I click on the, the clip that I want to apply the cuts on that I got from time build. So when I save the time build JSON cuts, I, I, I got them in a file. So I'm going to say, select the, the clip and apply the JSON file. And it's going to open up a box where I can select where the file is. So in my case, this is the JSON file. It's going to have a .json at the end, which is the save file from time build for the cuts. And click on OK. And and it's going to generate the cuts. Now, this was a small file. It happened very fast, right? This is less than a minute of a file. So I just want to show you what happens when, if, if, when the file is like really big. If it's an hour long, is it important when you're putting that file in that you that you put it at the 0, 0.00 mark in Premiere? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's I, I, I'll get to that in the okay. in the Final Cut Pro extension thing in in the multicam thing. So you have this big file over here. It's called I just call it the, the long file, and I'm going to import the long file inside. And this is about an hour long. I think it's forty. It's about an hour long. It's basically processing the cuts and it made the cuts. I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to save the timeline cuts. Now I'm going to go back and import that same file into Timebolt, the long file. And you can see it's a very long file. It's about an hour long. And it starts, as Doug said, you have to import it at 0, 0. And now when I click on this, when I select it and click on apply JSON files, I select this, 
it will take, as you can see, it's Premiere Pro is frozen right, right now and it's it's processing. So this is the work that's being done by the extension right now to cut up the, the timeline. Now, a lot of people might think that it's frozen because it's not working or it crashed. It did not crash. Just give it time. It's a long file. It's going to take some time. So it's done right now. See, it's, it made so many cuts and that's why it takes so long because there are so many cuts to be made. It basically reduced the time from spending hours making those cuts to like 20 seconds. I, I don't even think it was 20 seconds. <laughs> It's much faster than 20 seconds. That's yeah. hour long. Does that time com does that time compound? Let's say I had let's say I had two or three cameras. Would that time like triple and compound if yeah, you were it's adding? linear. It's, it's on it's a per a per cut linear basis. per per cut no yeah, per cut basis, correct. It's per cut basis. So the more cuts you have, the more time it will be frozen. So don't try to press the cancel key or press alt f4 or any of that just give it some time it will be done what if uh, what if i forgot to what if i forgot to put the timeline up against the zero zero uh, with the single oh, then file, it's like, gonna have issues it's gonna like then it has issue then you get like out of sync issues and there's let me issues. just show you what happens I'm, we can just go through and see what happens so if i have the, the file and maybe 2.4 two seconds two minutes 45 seconds out i select it and I click on this and I go to JSON, it's working. It's not frozen, it's working. It's gonna have issues because it's not a, when you go to the start of the file, you can see that there are like dead spots. This wasn't correctly synced up to the start zero. So it took you know, whatever it thought was zero and then applied it the cuts from there so, so don't do that it should be at zero the integrate the, the moral of the story is the integration using the integration you must make sure you've got your file starting at zero dot zero correct okay. correct 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 that, that's exactly right so okay now we did this for one file now what if you have like three different files right so we have an experiment that we did uh, with three files we have a multi-cam file over here so you have the master audio camera one camera two and camera three i'm gonna drop these in one by one right and this is the master audio i'm gonna drop it in one by one Okay, now you have so many files, right? So I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to right click, select all, right click, and I'm going to say synchronize. Now, all of them have a uh, same trickle down audio. So they're going to sync up together with the audio tracks. I'm just going to click OK, and they're going to sync up together. And as you can see, when they synced up, it created like a small uh, yeah. gap at the start, right? So I'm going to select them all and just line them up to zero, start at zero. When, when I line them up, they basically have no gaps over here and it starts to zero. Now, how many files are there? One, two, three, four files. Now, they all have the same audio because if you're recording an interview, if you're recording a video of yourself with multiple cameras usually the the base track of audio is going to be the same you can either use the same base audio track or one more technique that i found is that you can just put i and o at the end okay and then just like export an audio track from this exported the dot wave file and just use that directly so in, instead of having to find what the what the base audio is, because audio is very fast right so it can be rendered very quickly so you can just take this audio track and drop it into time board in this case we don't need to do that because we already have a master audio file that starts first and starts at zero that's the most important part whatever you put in time board has to start first and has to be starting at zero that's it once if you follow that rule it's impossible to make a mistake and you would do the so, the i the reason you would do the mp3 like you would do an mp3 is because unlike a single track where you can do punch in effects and fast forward effects inside time bolt you're going to be dealing with multiple cameras anyway you're just going to be cutting strictly for content right content, it, correct 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 and so that's, that's, and that's if, faster to yeah. do with an mp3 exactly so if you don't have a master audio track or you're unsure of where the master audio track is you can just do in and out and then you can just export the audio between these two points. And then you can use that in time board and then you can blanket apply that across. If I do a control M, which is an export, right? I can then go select this audio. So I can go H264. Uh, I just want an audio wave file, wave from audio. And I'm gonna export master audio. I'm just gonna click on export. So now it's exporting an MP3. It's very fast, it's done. So and if I go into FFmpeg playground, you can see the master audio file here. I go into time bolt, open that file up, uh, master audio, and then that's your cuts created. I'm gonna just take off some of them. Take this off, 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 take this off. Keep this one. I'm not, but I'm going to just, I don't think I need that either. Yeah, it looks like I'll just kind of fought. There you go. There's yeah, yeah. So good. I'm just going to keep these cuts and they look pretty okay. I'm just going to get rid of the last. But we just got rid of all the cuts that we didn't need and we have a clean file. I'm going to save the JSON timeline cuts because that's what you do when you're using the extension and it's called master audio dot wave dot json now i'm going to come back and i'm going to remove the the blockades which i put in and out which you do with i and o. Put, put a blockade you just put i and then you press the o key i for the start and o for the end and that's how you put that blockade in okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to open the extension i'm going to select all of the clips now the initial version of this extension did not allow for blanket selection. Now it does. So you can just select everything and you apply the JSON and you find where you saved. It was called master audio wave. And these are the cuts that, that, that Dabo made. I have a true multi-camera setup. So I can turn this off and I've got three cameras 
that include OBS. Camera one is and the reason, the, and the reason you you did it this way in, as opposed to the sequence, okay, is because with multicam, you don't want to be jumping back into a sequence and then making a cut and trying to figure exactly, out which camera exactly. which camera to use. This is this is multi this is multi track multi cam. Uh, uh, multi file. I, multi I, I say it's multi file. Multi file. Multi cam is a subset of multi files. Yeah, multi. I'm I'm trying to make the difference between just an audio and video so file. So the reason I don't think uh, multi cam is a good a good denominator to use is because in these uh, programs, right, multi cam is a kind of a feature that is built into it. So a, pre a Final Cut Pro will have a multi cam feature. Using multi file is a better differentiator because you're not really doing multi cam. You're just making sure these these files are synced together and make sense. Yes. You know? And the cuts make sense. So as, as you can see here, we did that out and that worked perfectly. There's no issues. Everything's lined up. And yeah, you can just like render this out and use it in your YouTube video. I, I would like to do the same thing, XML sequence with the same audio file that, that we use, the master audio. And click over here and it's called XML sequence. You cannot select export frame rate or add a custom export frame rate if you have a video because what TimeBoard will do is take the frame rate the video already has and make the file based on that. For audio files, it's different. For audio Audio files, audio doesn't have a frame rate, right? Audio is based on samples. But when you have to import a sequence into Premiere Pro, every file needs a frame rate. So for the sake of completion, we have a, a custom export frame rate, some selection for what frame rate you want, simply for audio files, not for video files. So you export XML sequence file, it gives you a similar file. And as we did earlier, you just take it and drop it into Premiere Pro. So it gives you three, three files. What is different in this? Now, this is just a video, right? This is not a, there's no audio here. Oh, sorry, there's no video here. This is just an audio file. This is just an audio file. When I double click on this, it'll, it'll show me the audio, right? I can actually add a video in this, right? If I uh, go to the video where we had the master audio, drop it in, drop it in over here. And magically it actually has the video now. <laughs> now, but, but there's a difference. Now let's say I take the other file, right? I take the cam one, drop it in. And I try to sync up the cam one with this, right? I sync up and now they are like perfectly aligned. You see that it does work. Like now it has a second camera now, see? but now you're confused as to where the cuts are. So let's say I want to cut here, right? And I want to make sure that the camera two is going to play from this. And the previous clip is going to be camera one, but there's no real way to match them up. The only way to do it is by you know, literally by copying this, putting that here. I think <laughs> there's no way of understanding where the cuts are made, which is why the extension makes sense because the extension gives you exactly where they are cut. You know? Perfect. That makes, that makes perfect sense. So I, I, now, I One more distinction is that this is not multicam. So in Premiere Pro, there's a feature for multicam where you select two camera files and then you right click and then you click on you create, say create multi-camera source sequence this is not that this is just a sequence with different files source files inside of it and that's why the multi-cam sequence is strictly for a video and audio uh, master video and a master audio file uh, together yeah. where yeah. you're not switching I mean, between cameras yeah because what can happen is sometimes you simply want to cut over here you you just want this and you want to remove this part for example let's say that works right because it doesn't matter if there's a cut here because when you play it there's going to be a cut in the middle See, because it's going to play this file anyway. You can do this. It's you can work around it if how this works at a at a professional level. But for regular users, I wouldn't recommend it. Perfect. So that's a there are a few ways. Let's go over it again. There's regular XML, which is awesome for uh, normal video files and normal audio files. Then there's XML sequence, which is awesome if you want to apply blanket effects to that audio source or video source after you make the cuts. And it's also great for if you have an external audio source, like a microphone, you know, some sort of camera. And then there's the extension, which is absolutely essential if you have multi files, m multiple files recording the same subject or around the same subject. Perfect. I think I think we got it. I'm, uh, I'm going to capture that and make sure to bundle it up. And, and I think that answers a lot of questions in clear. The freezing part, when you're doing a very long file and you're using the extension, Premiere Pro will seem like it's frozen, but just give it time. That's the time where it's actually making those cuts. It's a it's a grueling process for Premiere Pro because there are so many cuts that are made at the same time. Uh, there is no delay between those cuts being made. So imagine doing that by hand. And and and, and the other thing, if there's freezing, but also. If you're just using a single long file, don't use the extension. Premiere users need to understand they've got a choice between three, and they're, if they're not making the same type of content day in and day out, right? Correct. Like they're gonna have, they're gonna be able to choose which one's best based on the type of content that they're making. There's no Correct. point. You use if you're just doing a single long video file, use XML. Right, XML right. automatically exports all their punch effects. You're going to want to do more inside Timebolt. When you're doing multicam, you're going to maybe just do audio because you already got to do a bunch of, of camera selection work when you're when you're uh, using the integration. And then if you've got a video and an audio file, 
uh, master audio file put together, that's when you do the the sequence because it basically just Correct. makes it so perfect. I, I think I think that answers all those, those questions. Maybe you can just oh, hit cancel if it. I, I'd like to in. keep. I'd like I'd like to keep this very specific to Final Cut Pro. I'm sorry to Premiere and Final Cut Multi-file. Pro. Multi file, yeah. Excellent. multi-file this is how to export maybe next week we do resolve right and that way we've got some really good baseline content for these Perfect. export options that's it for office hours on july or, whatever, or on september 21st 2023 don't forget to the like button subscribe to time bolt and of course hit the notification bell when we go live and we're out of time thank you yo bye-bye guys take care